Hey there, art fans. I'm, I just got in a uh, box of art supplies from Dick Blick, so I thought I'd do a little unboxing. Though I already took everything out of the box, and it was a good thing I did because all my ink I bought was wrapped up in this. So that took a while to get through. But I'll show you the first thing I got is paper. Not, not too exciting to look at, but this is this... Um, this is the paper I do this on. And I'm actually trying out a slightly different brand. This stuff right here, this paper, was like a co-branded Dick Fabriano paper that I've been buying for years. But then I think they split. Because the paper I bought last time, I think it was just Fabriano and went up in price. Then I just noticed Dick Blick had the same size watercolor paper for cheaper. It's like... um. I think I, I I just paid a dollar a thirty dollar thirty for a sheet this size, and the really the the good stuff that's this size and this thickness is usually about eight dollars a sheet. The really good stuff that's like twice as thick as this is about eighteen dollars a sheet. So I but but it's funny because this this stuff right here really isn't very good watercolor paper, but it's great for doing ink on. So that's why I like it. Um, and you have to watch out for stuff that's that's like student grade or something like that because usually that just that means it's more difficult for students to work on like this this i guess would be considered a student grade paper in turn but a lot of times the more expensive your paper the easier it is to work the more the more um, abuse it can take, the more erasing it can take, the more water it can take, the more scumbling it can take. So that makes it actually easier to work with. So sometimes when students buy like student grade paper, they get really frustrated because student grade paper is often not as easy to work with as the expensive stuff. But, but I know how to work with it. So that's perfect stuff for me. And we got another 10 sheets. It was only $13.00 as opposed to a hundred. Uh, so I was happy with that. Got, got some paper. And then the other thing I got to go with it, what I use with this is more ink. Uh, and this, this is just basically Dick Black Cat ink. And I've used all sorts of different India inks and I've liked them on all diff different levels. But this is the one I've been liking lately. And it's funny because ink also kind of, Ink can be a bit weird on you because you first of all you have to shake it up real well. And it can come in different sort of since it's water based, it's not always the same consistency. Well this one was cold because it was out and on the cold truck. So like the first time I tried out this Dick Blick in this exact container a few years ago, it was way too watery for me. I didn't like it. The ink wasn't black and thick enough. And it also matters your ink if you're using a brush or a dip pen. A dip pen usually needs a little bit thinner ink. I like the thicker ink with the brush because it gives me a, a, a nice dark brush stroke. So I bought, I bought my first bottle of this a few years ago. Didn't like it, set it aside. And then what often happens with, with ink is as it sits there and some of the water evaporates off it, even when it's in the container, it, it thickens up. So it's like I let mine sit for six months. I didn't even think about it. I wasn't even trying to thicken it up. And I pulled it out and I really liked it. So now what do I do? What I do is here is my last. That's got about a third of a bottle left in it. And I'll take a third of this bottle and pour it in and shake it up. That way this bottle has some air in the top and it'll sit around for six months thickening up till where, where it's... Uh, where it is when I'm, and I've heard, it was funny, I think it was Dave Sim I was listening to, and he was talking about how if ink gets too thick, it's useless, and you have to throw it out, and I'm like, yeah, add water to it, I don't know what the heck he was talking about, it's water-based, if your ink gets too thick, you add a little water to it, I've been doing that for 30 years, I don't know what he was talking about when he said ink spoils, I've never had ink spoil on me. If it's if it's too thin, you let it sit around for a while and it thickens up. If it's too thick, some people even boil their ink to get some of to get it thicker. And if it's and if it's too thick, you add water to it. It's it's not that complicated. Um, and then I got three bottles of yet another black ink. This little um, ultra draw. Black India Rapidograph ink. 
And what this stuff is, you can only get it in this size bottle. You, I think they used to have it in bigger bottles, but they don't anymore. This is technical pen ink. That's why it says Rapidograph on it. Um, and it's ink, you know, it's regular black India ink with a little glycerin in it, which is a surface tension breaker, which helps it flow through technical pens. But what I use it for is I refill a whole bunch of, um, like these basic markers. Here's a, a Neo Pico line two. This is just a basic sign pen. Here's another basic sign pen. It's just, for some reason, it's called a computer pen. This one is a Japanese brand. And that's just a little, that's just your basic marker. But you pull off this back cap, you pull out the little sponge, and you re-wet the sponge with this ink. And now you've got a much better ink in your pen. So that's a little tip. And it makes these last, a, you know, for, for a lot longer until the, until the tip wears down, basically. Um... Like, this one's got a really big tip on it. This is kind of an art drawing pen, but I really like this tip. And it's I must have refilled this thing ten times already, and the tip hasn't worn out yet. So I'll keep going with that. But that that's what this uh, Rapidograph ink is good for. Uh, da -da -da. Then I got even more ink. Um, I think I've shown you. Here's one of them I'm working this is one I'm in the middle of. I'm gonna I'm gonna add some of my new colors to this. I've been working on a, a colored ink style. That's what I want to work on this year. So I bought a bunch of colored inks. I only have like three different colors of ink. I have uh, red, blue, and yellow big bottles of it. So I decided to get some of these. The same brand ink. It's F W Acrylic Ink. Got an orange. Oh, look, goes with my shirt. And I'm just you know. I, I finally decided to get some bottles of ink, too, because these bottles are about five bucks a bottle. And I'm like, you know what? That's cheaper than the markers I'm buying. So I may as well build up a little uh, little set of, of inks, too, since I'm going to be using them. Here's a green one. This goes, almost goes with my shirt. This is sort of, what color green is? This is more of a sap green, olive green. There we go. It's got to be shaken up, too. They're lying on their side in that big uh, bubble wrap thing. Like I said, I was just, I, I only have the three colors, so I'm adding more to my collection. As a matter of fact, I ordered more inks from Jerry's Artorama. I'll be having another video this week. And here's purple. Look at look at how that's separated. We have that. These things tend to, they're, they're acrylic in water, so they tend to separate, so you got to shake them up real well. I don't know why that's two colors, but this is velvet purple or something. And purples are tough. Uh, Finding the right purple, I always or finding or mixing the right purple can be tough. So I might have to buy a few more bottles of. In fact, I thought I got two bottles of purple, but I only got one. Got the second bottle of green. That's a bright green, as compared to the olive green. So we got a bright and uh, a darker green. And then it's like, hmm, it looks. Uh, what color yellow is this? Yellow ochre. That's not. That's a pretty bright yellow ochre, but I guess because that's ink. Yellow ochre I'm used to is a little browner than this, a little more mustardy, but I ha already have the bright yellow, so I may as well get a, a darker one. And then what color is this? Turquoise. All right, nice blue. Turquoise blue, which is a sort of greenish blue. You can get turquoise greener or bluer. Um, so it's just, you know, six six inks I bought, and I think I have another six inks coming from Jerry's Artorama who had different brands and different colors of ink. And then, also to go along with the ink, I bought some brushes. And this is uh, the big, you know, whoop, look on the wrong way. Windsor Newton Series 7. This is a number three. This is the brush almost all comic book inkers use to ink their work. Sometimes they use a number two, sometimes some smaller. I like a number three. But this is the best brush for ink and watercolor. The problem is that if you use one of these brushes with India ink, it disintegrates. So, as soon as you dip this in some black India ink, the clock is ticking. Um, if you're using it in watercolor, it'll last forever. But like the shellac, I think it is in the India ink, eats away at the bristle and the glue in this. So, and, and these are also the most expensive one. This this was about twenty-two dollars for this brush. But once again, 
if you're first learning how to ink, it's much, much easier to ink with this brush than one of these sort of knockoff. The, this is the Blick branded Sable. I've also got this one I've been using. I tried out with, uh, this is, um, I think this is also, you, you can also get synthetic Sable. I think this one's nat Princeton Round, number four. Oh, four. Another thing I noticed is for the knockoff ones, the numbers are a little different. Like, uh, I usually get a, a num the number refers to the size of the bristle right there, how big that the tip of the brush is and the, how much bristle is in it. And then I noticed the a number three in Windsor Newton is usually a number four and everything else. So it's like, hmm, everything else is made there is a little bit smaller than Windsor Newton. But I picked these two up to work with the inks. I'm gonna, uh, like I said, these are, these are Blick branded, Blick Masterstroke Red Sable. And, and that's what the Series 7 is to Red Sable. And what separates the Series 7 from these other ones usually is the, the tip, how well pointed it is. The Series 7 really holds its tip well over time. Of course, if you put an India ink over time, it's going to disintegrate the brush. And, you go, and, and you'll know because you won't have one tip, you'll have two. <laughs> and you'll be like, oh, that's not good anymore. Um, but I'll, I'll use these with my new colored inks. I'll try them out and I won't, I won't dip the, that's what I do to, one of the things I do to mark my brushes, let me see if I can show you. Uh, I don't think you can see it on here cause it's covered in black. I'll, I'll do it again just to, I take an X-Acto knife and I run it around the top of the brush and make a cut line. It's dipped in ink so much that my cut line is done. But I just run that around and make a cut line right there so that I can tell, there we go, that this, there we just, I just cut some chunks out of it there. So see those, see those marks up near the ferrule, the ferrule there? I go all the way around. That way I know this is an ink brush. And when the ink brush goes bad, I cut a second liner that way i know it's a bad brush i still use my bad brushes to do crazy monster stuff but that way i can tell i i can i can keep my watercolor brushes fine and never you know they never disintegrate they'll last a lifetime and my ink brushes as they slowly disintegrate i'll replace so but that that's one of the ways i can tell them apart but if you're just starting out watercoloring or inking get one of the more expensive brushes because it makes it easier i mean Sometimes using one of these brushes is just more difficult. But for me, who's been doing it for 30 years, it's no problem because I know just how to use them. For someone just starting out, this is my, if I had, I grabbed the, I, you know, I started using these when I first started learning and they're so much easier to learn with. Uh, it took me years to be able to use it. It's funny, it, took, it takes longer to be able to use the cheaper brushes because they're just not as good. It's like it's like entering, you know, a race with a slow car. Well, we'll start you off with a slow car and as long as you got the slow car, you're never going to win the race. Uh, uh, it's kind of like this as long as as long as you got the crap so we shouldn't even say slow. We should say crappy car. As long as you got the crappy car, you're never going to win the race. As long as you got the crappy brushes, you're never going to learn to win the race. This one will teach you how to win the race. So go with those ones. And then what else did I get? I got, um, this is just a reef, one of the new Copic refills that are half the size of the old Copic refills. It's a uh, refill ink for YR09 Chinese orange. I just needed another one. Like I said, they used to be 25 milliliters. Now they're 12, which just annoys me to no end and makes me want to not buy Copics anymore. But I already have a full hundred set of Copics plus all the refills. So if I switch to another brand, they just might go do this. Uh, it just drives me bonkers. Okay, and then I got, just just for the heck of it, these are brush pens. I, I'm, I much prefer a real brush over a brush pen. But for some reason, I'm still fascinated with brush pens. I like trying all different ones. I only use them on occasion. This is three nib sizes. Um, I never tried these ones out. I'll try them. Like I said, I, if you give me a choice between a brush pen and a brush, it's no contest. It's the brush every time. It's so much better, so much more versatile. Uh, 
you could do just do more stuff with it. But you, I still like brush pens just to get them and try them out. So I got some of those. And then the last thing I got was paper. Uh, and and once again, paper paper matters. Oh, like there's a chunk out of one of the pages. This is 14 by 17 paper. I usually, when I do my work, I use comic book size, which is 11 by 17. So I end up trimming off this and then cutting it up into, um, that's what I do my art cards on. And these baseball card size ones, where are they? Yeah, these are from like right on. So it's like uh, right along here is uh, 11 inches. And that, that lets me get three of these out of each sheet too. So I can do my art cards on them. But this is your basic Strathmore 300 Bristol. You can usually find this in um, Michael's stores and places like that, or any real art supply store too, like Dick Blick. And this is the, I, this is smooth. There's smooth and there's vellum. Vellum is a little rougher. I usually get smooth, also sometimes called plate. But a lot of people don't like this. They prefer the next step up, which is Strathmore 400 which comes in a brown uh, brown package rather than this yellow. And I'm okay with this. And, and the reason that the brown Strathmore is better than this paper is once again, it can take more punishment. So it's got a, about the same surface, maybe a little bit smoother, but not much, but it can take more punishment. You can draw on it, erase on it, and the paper surface will still be good. This paper, if you draw it on and erase it on it too much, it, it it starts to degrade the surface. But I almost never I draw an in ink on two separate pieces of paper, uh, being that I blue line everything. So I don't even worry about wrecking my paper with my pencils. So I'm so this paper is good good for me. But once again, that's something that it takes years to learn how to do. Where if you're just starting out, me when you're just starting out, you should. Getting the good supplies can help you more. <laughs> like I said, I'm expert enough that the the lesser paper doesn't bother me in this case. But if I was just I, when I just started out, I, I really liked to use the good. It's like I used to get that when I said eighteen dollar watercolor paper in the mid '90s when I was learning to do gouache and watercolor. I spent the I think it was only about ten or twelve bucks then, not eighteen. I used to work on that three hundred pound watercolor paper all the time i loved it i haven't worked on it in years just because i don't have to I, this this paper suits me much better i can it's it's cheaper and i can just kind of do things and not have to worry about the cost so some sometimes you you're better off with the quality stuff when you're younger and as you get older and have much more experience uh you can you, you learn how to handle the cheaper stuff <laughs> so there you go um, bunch of art supplies, a whole bunch of bags at there. I think later on in this week I'll have my Jerry's Artorama uh, unboxing, and you guys have a good week out there.